Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Flutter Boring Show. Uh, today, I'm here with Fitz. Hello, everyone. Hi, Philip. Happy to be here again. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Fitz, obviously, as we all know, Fitz and I are the best team for Boring Show, right? Um, uh, so we are going to today look at debugging. Uh, and so this is a thing that we've obviously done a lot of times on the Boring Show, but we just want to go and, and just like debug one thing this, this time and hopefully it will take us only 20 minutes, 30 minutes. So this will be a short one. Um, yeah, we'll but see where it, it goes. Could, yeah, exactly. We'll, we'll see how it goes. This debugging obviously is everyone's favorite part of programming, right? Uh, it's, it's when you find a bug and then spend four hours uh, bashing your head on the, uh, the keyboard and then you find that one typo somewhere and, and then uh, you feel very productive. Uh, but yeah. there are and better ways to do debugging and worse, right? Yes, exactly. So a lot of those uh, four hours, at least for me, and I know many other people, are spent just throwing print statements everywhere and trying to see, OK, at this point, variable A is set to this. And at this other point, it's set to this thing. But then variable B changes after that with another print statement. You just more print statements everywhere. and. That can get kind of unwieldy sometimes. And every now and again, you forget one, and that changes the behavior of your app later. Um, mm -hmm. So we're going to look at a couple of other ways to debug. Yeah, I um, so I, I heard the even it's called print debugging, right? And I, I have to say, I often go into that. Like, like I, I will, uh, without thinking, I, I don't realize I have the debugger. And instead, I will just like do print statements and then realize, oh, like I, I'm wasting my time. Uh, today, we'll be going uh, to look at the again the Hacker News app that you all love. Uh, this is the one on the screen right now on the right, and it's it's just a Hacker News app reader, and uh, it has many bugs, uh, <laughs> and that's because uh, we're uh, a we're terrible engineers, and also because we. Um, like every time we work on it, it's because of one of these shows. So we really don't have much time to like look into things deeply without being stressed about like what's what's going to happen. And um, I actually found like last episode when I was alone and doing the the show, uh, it was about logging. And this episode, I added some logging statements. Which basically are like print statements, but <laughs> but I, I edit logging statements uh, throughout the code, and that was just basically to show logging. But even during the episode, I didn't bring it up. But even during the episode, I was like, "There's a bug. We're doing one thing twice that yeah. we should be doing only once." So I'm going to to show you the bug in. Um, in practice, and then we'll look if we can do anything about it without just print statements, but actually using the debugger and looking at variables and, and stuff like this. So, so the back. Um, okay, I will make this console hopefully much bigger. Okay, and these are all the because I'm running in debug mode. I see all these messages. Mm. Uh, fine, like you know, constructor called for hacker news notifier. And uh, that is probably something like this. And it's, these are all coming from the the logger that you put in. Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. So see, like constructor called log fine, and the, it it will rewrite itself into where w was it called for, when exactly, and um, and the message, right? Nice. So it's a nice boring topic. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, yeah. And so this is this is fine. And actually, let me let me just clear this and <laughs> this show fine. you that if I if I like reload here, it will do um, a little run for new articles. So I just reload it, right? So um, the refresh was called on stories type top stories, mm -hmm. which I have no idea where that is. Uh, I think it's this, right? Yes, refresh called, right? And then right. after that, uh, worker created and ready, fetching. That's this. 
and then articles fetched, awesome, and then articles refreshed and listeners notified, right? So this is what we expect. Yep. But look, look at what happens when I reload the like re hot restart. So basically, start from scratch, right? Mm -hmm. We we should probably see only one of these things, but so you're saying started. one one each of those? Oh my gosh, that's more than yeah exactly. what I expected so, to see. Yeah, huh? Uh, Whoa! All right, so uh, let's have a look. Uh, first refresh of uh, first tab called. And that is actually, I I think I know where it is. This is maybe I so I know. Is that is that first uh, refresh the 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 first load then of yeah of this? So tab? we're doing we're doing like the Hacker News Notifier, which is basically our class that like helps with talking to the Hacker News Web API. Okay. Um, that that one is created at the start of the app. And it will say like, hey, constructor called. Then it will create the tabs, which uh, right now is just top stories and news stories. And then it will schedule a micro task, which just makes it uh, asynchronous and, and say, uh, we'll look like we're fetching the first first step, which means the top stories, and we're, we're fetching them, right? Because we don't want the user to have to reload every time they come to this um, right. and then we refresh okay but and so uh then the same deal the refresh called but look at this there's refresh called and then there's refresh called twice oh and also top stories so it's the same exactly the same same tab and then there's a uh, worker created and ready worker created and ready articles <laughs> fetched articles fetched Refresh listener notify listener not here. So so we're like we're sending mm. uh, two requests. We're creating two different isolates, and then we're parsing the things. And this all at the start of the app. So like yeah. this is really terrible. And I don't know why this is called twice. It shouldn't be called twice because as you see, as you see, <laughs> this is just a single schedule micro task. So like yeah yeah. You know, Okay. All right. So, like, yes, we could definitely now add more logging statements and do all the print debugging uh, craziness that we normally m might go to. But yeah, let's certainly instead could. do uh, just debug. Like, so use debugger. Um, Deep face what's, what's a debugger? Tell, tell That's us. That's a great question. So, a, a debugger uh, is a thing that removes your bugs. <laughs> no, no, no okay. not, not quite. <laughs> Almost. Um, so most uh, modern code editors have a tool called a debugger, um, and they they mostly fun function in more or less the same way. Uh, so um, Philip here is using Android Studio. Um, I tend to use Visual Studio Code, um, but they both have a very similar looking uh, debugger. So um, if you've ever noticed up at the uh, top or to the side, actually, I think in Android Studio, it's kind of on the left hand side there. There's these weird symbols. There's like a, a, a stop button and a pause button and a, a, a like refresh with a, a stop sign and then like other arrows going in every which way and like dotted arrows and like they all look kind of similar they're all just pointing in places and stuff like that that's the debugger so we're gonna work through that a little bit today and what this tool is doing for those of you who don't know if you do congratulations you you know um uh if you're like me and you just kind of forget about it sometimes, the debugger is a, a tool that allows you to go step by step through your code and it gives you a ton of helpful information, sometimes too much, about what your app is doing. Um, so it's a great way to see when are things being called, what are variables at different times, um, uh, to stop and wait for something to happen, and let's go into it. So. Tool for debugging. We're in Android Studio right now. How do we get started with that, Philip? Right. Yes. Um, so I guess the probably the best way to start with a debugger is to. Uh, all right. So the 
the one thing that about the debugger, you can always stop execution. So you can always pause the program, right? But like, look, look what happens. If I pause the program now, um, it's like, it doesn't really help me because like I'm not stopped and at some particular point. So you generally want to stop at a point that interests you right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so I will just, yeah, I, I stopped and then made a, a movement and, and then repost, I mean, what resumed. Um, but what I can do is add a um, breakpoint. What's a breakpoint? While I do it, do that, I, uh, what's a breakpoint? Yeah, so Philip was saying there um, that the pause, it kind of didn't do really anything interesting interesting because it didn't stop in any particular part of the app. Uh, and so what a breakpoint is, is a point where we break the code. Uh, <laughs> and it specifically is telling the debugger that, hey, stop right there. So run through the program, do everything you would normally do, but if you hit a breakpoint, pause it there, and let's inspect things. So right. Philip here set a breakpoint on line 83 of, uh, of in this function. Uh -huh. um, and so when we run the code, uh, so we, we might have to, to restart or, or something to get it right. to, to actually pick up the breakpoint. But um, once we run it, the moment we hit that line, line 83, and this is our, our refresh call because it, it happens twice and we don't want it to be happen happening twice, so we want to see where it came from. Um, and so when we stop, the debugger should help us figure that right. out. So what I'll do now, I'll refresh, which is not the buggy part, right? The, what, what the buggy part for us is the first load, but I'll refresh so, so, you, so we can play a little bit with the debugger. Mm -hmm. So I'll refresh and uh, sure enough, you see that this is paused, and and now I'm here, and I can do uh, things. Uh, you generally use f um, function, so f8 is step over, which means just basically go to the next statement and execute this one, right? So I can do this. Um, then there is th these are all the weird things that you can do step into, which means which doesn't do anything here. So I'll just step over. That was again f f8. Uh, but I can step into, which means if there's uh, any method or function or even getter that we can like inspect and look into that, that needs to execute for this statement to execute, then we go into it. So I think if I now do F7, which is this, this guy, um, I will go into notify listeners, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and this is a great way to kind of, it is to see what... Uh, the things you call, what they are doing. Um, and this is where you can kind of get into um, a little bit of a rabbit hole with the debugger if you're just using step into. Um, if you are stepping into, stepping into, and you, and you uh, miss the next line and, and think, and, and you're trying to go through your own code and you accidentally step into the framework code, that's okay um, uh, because they're, are ways to uh, get out of that with the step out. Yep. So let's do step out because we kind of we think that the bug is not in notify listeners. It in it's in our code. We don't need yeah. to do that. So I just um, clicked uh, shift eight, shift f eight. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so that's uh, we covered step over, step into, and step out, and then there mm -hmm. is four step into, um, which I have never used. Have you? <laughs> no, I've, I've not. Um, four step into. It doesn't appear to do anything with that particular statement. Right. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's just, yeah. Uh, well, uh, as you oh, said, well, like as, as you see, like for example, dot value, I, I think this will work even with just F7 uh, step into, uh, but even just the value, because this is a getter, we will get to that, um, even though it's very easy for this one. Yeah, right. I, I suspect the force is when, um, uh, if you don't have direct access to the source code of the thing, um, 
So if you do have access to the source code, say you've, you're running from the framework, which you've downloaded the source code for, because that's how you run the framework, um, then the step into just works naturally because it can go through the framework. And you have all those symbols there that you can work with. Um, when you don't have the source code, I believe uh, the fourth step into is going to then try to figure something out for you. Um, so this would be in the case of, of, uh, of different languages that are going to um, bring in shared libraries differently. Right. Yes. Yeah. So so this probably doesn't really apply for Dart because you have all your the source code for Flutter is there and all the source code for Dart is there as well. So yeah, good, good point. Um, all right. So we, we looked at this, right? Um, the, the other really important thing is that you have access, well, actually, frames what are frames uh, because this is like there's frames in flutter right and it's confusing because there's also frames in the debugger yeah um so let's see it's hard for me to see the screen it looks like those frames oh. um are those function calls yeah they, uh, they are basically yep. okay. yeah uh so it's it's like um it's a, basically a stack uh, what would you would you would see in a, a call stack that, um, but for some reason in debuggers it's called frames, and you can actually go and see like okay so who who called refresh here, and then who called the refresh indicator here, and it's closure and then mm -hmm. then we're in a in a uh, in weird places if if it's yellow in uh, IntelliJ then then it means that we are in like a library or something. Yeah, like not um, not your own code. Yeah, um, but the, and I, I think they're they're called frames because um, it is a stack of function calls. But um, when we are normally talking about stacks in like data structures um, and, and algorithms, we're we're looking at um, simple objects or simple uh, data types. You know, you'll have a series of integers or or a series of classes that are on on the stack. Um, and you can pop them on and off and, and get different behaviors depending on what you want to use the stack for. Um, with the program execution, the, the stack is a little bit more complicated because it's the, the item there is a representation of our current execution status. So we have the function call, we have its parameters, we have pointers to where it came from, we have pointers to where it needs to go, we have um, the local variables will we'll end up there in some way. We have pointers to its part of memory. Um, we have lots of pointers going in lots of different places. And so it's a much more complicated structure than just a simple object or a simple data type. And so because of that, we call it a frame. It's a kind of a, a window into where we are in the current program. So Right. Yes. And and this actually leads well to, to what I was going to do next, because um, as you can see, like, you can go to a higher frame, uh, but you can still see wh like where exactly we were, right? And sometimes, not now, but sometimes you actually have access to variables of that frame, which, uh, but let's go back to, to here. Um, so here, to, to, to talk about variables, this is probably the most useful feature of debuggers, uh, at least for me when trying to figure something out, is that you can just, as you're going through your code with like F8, you mm -hmm. can actually look at the variables that are currently in scope. And mm -hmm. um, in this case, you know, we just created a new variable, a local one called worker, and we can inspect it. We can look at uh, what the internal state of that uh, variable is, and also and this is easily overlooked, but like almost always, if you're inside a class or something, um, you will have the this, which is basically the class that you're currently in, the, the instance that you're currently working on. And and for us, that is the Hacker News tab. And we can see like it's loading and there's like its its name, uh, the, the stories type and all that, even the logger. Uh, so uh, this, is, um, th this is super helpful. And you, as you can see, like I can go and go and go and see uh, how things are changed and uh, and so on. All right, so yeah, we have we have done the reload. 
it took a long, it, it took a while. Um, <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah. Um, all right. So let's let's now actually. I think we can do the same. Yeah, we can do the same same breakpoint, and I will now try to reproduce the bug that we've seen, which is happening at the start of this. Right. So okay. I am hot restarting and go, okay, we're here. So once uh, it's called and this is what we expect, right? We have mm -hmm. created the new Hacker News Notifier and then we said, the next time you have time, uh, schedule micro task and, and refresh the first thing. So yep. now we go and resume the program, which is basically just like, go ahead. Uh, but if we didn't have the bug, we would we would accept, not ex, yeah, expect, sorry, um, wrong word, um, expect to just never hit this again, right? But mm -hmm. we will probably because, yeah, we Ooh, hit it there again. There it is. Oh, and, interesting. It came from somewhere else. Yeah. And see, and the stack or the frames are different. Uh, we, we could look at where there was this. Oh, okay. This is weird. Oh, it was called from a build function. Oh. New tab with no data. Let's fetch some. Hmm. And also, yeah. So it's weird because <laughs> we have checked. Uh, well, I, I think I know I know what's going on. But so so we have checked like, okay, if the articles is empty and we are not loading currently. Mm -hmm. Which we, by the way, we know we are loading currently. Uh, yeah, we should uh, be. Then, then do the refresh, right? Um, so this is another place where we call it. I, I'm, at this point, I'm not sure we, if we even maybe maybe we edit it and forgot it to uh, to remove it. Maybe it doesn't need to be here at all. Maybe it does need to be here, but we need to check more about like uh, is it currently being loading. Um, so. Yeah. Um, I, I, but I wanted to, to show another, so I'll, I'll let it go, but I wanted to show another feature of debuggers and that is, uh, conditional breakpoints, mm -hmm. which is, Ooh. yes. So, which is like, um, the first one, when we came here, obviously nothing was loading, loading was false, uh, and we make it into true. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, you'd think that the next one doesn't ever happen because we check for is loading, right? So if you, for example, if this function, the, for us, it, this function is called only twice. So we, we're okay with just like doing it once and then running again. But but imagine that your function was was being run a thousand times, mm. and then at some point with a weird, like it's some weird configuration of things, uh, then it's a problem. And then you want to only break on that in that place. And so, right. so, so, so you speaking, might have yes, you might have a ahead. function that takes in different parameters or does some calculations, and you found that if n is greater than 500, then this bug happens. But when it's less than 500, for each one of those 500 calls, you don't want to break. But over that, you do. Um, and so here, we're going to only break if uh, is loading is true with the condition that Philip's putting in. Right. Which is, um, which again, is something that we don't ever expect to happen, right? Um, so so th this, this would be another way where we're like, um, like for example, now if I just refresh, this will not be hit because we the is loading is not true. Um, but again, if I hot restart, um, we will only break once, and and now it's in the second one, right? Mm, um, yeah, the one that is like has doesn't make any sense because why like why are we loading like how are we not loading? Um, I mean, <laughs> how are we refreshing when we're already ro loading? Okay, yeah. so uh, so we found the bug, uh, but now uh, the the thing is, how do we fix it? And is it really is this really needed? 
And I am trying to, I, I'm pretty sure this is my bug uh, because this looks <laughs> like a, 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 the code that I would write uh, when, <laughs> when I was under pressure. Um, and this is basically a race condition. I, I'm pretty sure it's, it's like uh, trying to do, it's, it, it's just not advisable to do anything like this. But I'll I'll try to walk you through this. Could we try uh, so, to put a, another breakpoint here, and uh, actually check where is loading is set? Yeah, or, or uh, how it or what its value is there? I guess it would have to be true, or false in this case for that. To well, run. it's so so. I I'm pretty sure what happens here is that when. Um, when we're when we're on this statement, mm -hmm. it is false, right? But when we're over here, which is like the next execution um, place, because we're in a future, right? So that, that's why I say this is not a good idea to to, to do this. Um, I see. Yep. When we're in the next one, then then it's no longer false, but we are not checking again. <clears throat> so so this is like a. A classic race condition, I think, when when we are doing something that we know is um, true at one point, and then um, something else happens while we're doing this, mm -hmm. um, and um, but we still think, oh, it's all okay because we're loading. Uh, I mean, we're not loading, so we we need to uh, call a refresh, and therefore we're doing two things that are that are supposed to be just done once. Right. Um, um, so to, to resummarize that, just because uh, asynchronous stuff and uh, race conditions can be confusing sometimes, um, they we basically have multiple things happening at the same time, sort of. Um, and here we have, uh, we're checking a variable, and based on that variable setting, we're saying it's okay to do something, except the variable is changing between when we check it and when we do the thing that we wanted to do um, because things are happening together. Um, and and the, the future helps make that possible um, rather than having just straight uh, you know, top-down execution. With the future, we allow things to happen in different orders. Right. Yes. Um, also, like I should probably say why we even have the future here. Why do we not just go current dot refresh? And the reason is that you cannot, do, like some some things are forbidden in a build method in the build mm. method context. Um, and I'm pretty sure in this case it's just the notify listeners is not supposed to be run when you are in a build method. I um, see. Right, so so like a very very hacky solution to this is say like hey like I want to run this but not now do it the next time you you have any time, uh, but this brings a bug uh, to us and so and and again um, I should say this is probably not a good good way to do anything that like the the build method should be idempotent it should not do things um, generally speaking that um, that are that are other than just building widgets. Mm -hmm. So uh, so I have a feeling that we could just like remove this and call it a day. And I think yeah. the I think it's 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 not really needed because we already have that other stuff uh, going on. But we'll see. Um, but I think I had another. Oh, okay. So another way to add a breakpoint. Mm. Uh, that is sometimes it's similar to the conditional statement, uh, I mean, conditional breakpoint, but but is a, um, a different. It's coming from a library in Dart called Dart Colon Developer, and I just wanted to 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 say it because we're talking about breakpoints now. So if you go to API Dart Lang uh, dot actually Dart Dev uh, for the old guard, it's dartlang.org, uh, then you have the Dart colon developer library. And it, it gives us a bunch of things that I've actually never used, and I kind of want to mm -hmm. use it today, but we'll see. Um, 
uh, if you've been profiling or looking at any profiling video, you probably know about timeline, where which lets you add things to timeline so you can measure your own code uh, in profile mode and like see if it's performant and stuff like that. Um, but it also has these functions like debugger, which is what Ooh. we'll do now. And it's literally just a way to, we can, we can read this. It basically stops a program as if a breakpoint were hit, right? Uh, so, so here we can, we can programmatically yeah. breakpoint. Yeah, which is mm. which is a little similar to print debugging, to be honest, because you're you're <laughs> basically saying like you create like you're modifying your code instead of looking at the IDE and the the debugger. Uh, but yeah. sometimes, if for example, this was like super hard to do, it's not now. But if if we had a really really complex uh, logic to find out if we want to break or not, then we could do this. So if is loading then uh, debugger. Actually, yeah, we, we could we can do. Yeah, it, you could do something like this, like mm. uh, if uh, if is loading instead. But but I think because it it's true, then so let, let, let's try. It. Um, I'm restarting the game. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, cool. See, so so the. Debugger stopped. I'm. I don't have a breakpoint here, but the debugger stopped on this one uh, right after we called debugger. So th this this can be helpful. Uh, what else do we have? I'm That's not a sure. Great actually. question. I have I have two uh, other questions for you. Yeah, go. When when we get a chance. Um, so first question is how uh, how do asserts play into this world? Um, because it, it seems like another thing that. Um, you know, we give it a condition, and or and something happens. So, is, how how are asserts different than a breakpoint? Well, actually, it's not not that much, right? So let, let's let's try it again. Uh, and this is why you generally want to assert everything at the start of functions that you kind of assume. Um, so, well, if you do this, it's not going to be as pretty, I think. Yeah, I think it's going to be a little bit. Oh wait, what's going ah, on? Wait, it worked. That's weird. Um, isn't is loading supposed to be false going into this function? Yeah. So assert is loading. And uh, aren't they? Uh, well, there's a funny You're thing with assert that isn't there. There's certain running modes that asserts don't trigger in yeah but but we are in debug mode so that's I what i thought yeah yeah i don't know what's going on here um, but this brings up a good uh case of uh one of the differences um so with with assert um it is a different kind of programmatic break and i believe it throws exceptions when things are are bad um or the condition is yes. Um, yes. wrong and so that's going to be more of a, a, a runtime thing than it is a debugging thing. Um, oh, thank you. Yes. Oh, and there it is. Look at that. Yes. So it's there. Um, it, it is throwing. Um, and But you'll notice like we got confused by like what's going on, because yeah. program execution still more or less continued. We just have an, a new exception in there. Whereas the debugging and the breakpointing um, actually allow our IDE to to pick up where it stopped. Um, so kind of two similar ideas, um, uh, but the asserts are going to be things that you you definitely want to be true and probably only checking when you're you're writing your code. Um, and the, the breakpointing is for, I don't know what's happening. Let's try to, to stop and figure it out. Right. Yes, yes, good point. And also, I would not expect this to, to not actually stop uh, i i know that especially in like non asynchronous code if you assert and if if you hit a problem like that it will stop and you will stop like somewhere inside the assertion so it's not so pretty you have to mm. go like several like one or two frames up to see where actually you you stop um but yeah this is um this is not fun 
Um, yeah. But yeah. All right. So let me just look at if there's anything. So there's the log, uh, which is okay. great. It will show up really well in DevTools. Like we have a logger in DevTools that, um, or log visualizer, I guess, in DevTools that, that gets all these things like uh, the level, the severity level, um, the name, um, and, and stuff like this. So so th this is a, a, instead of print statements, if you do them, you could do the dot developer slash log. Right, slash and developer. that one's nice because then, then it shows up into the dev tools where lots of other things also show up in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we uh, also we didn't we didn't say this, but DevTools actually has a debugger. So if you're like using Vim or Emacs or whatever or Notepad, and you uh, you want still to debug, you can use the debugger in DevTools, and that is built in Flutter. So you know, there you go. That's that's great. All right. So um, I think uh, did we show everything? I I really wanted to sh show the inspect, which I have no idea what it does. Um, sends a reference to object to any debugger, right? So, debuggers. so like, can I can I do inspect uh, this? I wonder if that this will work. Hmm. Let's see. Oh, well, nothing. All right. I wonder. I wonder if the debugger wasn't technically attached because we didn't have. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. So, yeah, if we, oh, that's the other thing. Um, if you break at a breakpoint and then run, and if you're in the debugger, meaning that you're paused, you can do yep. things like evaluate expression, Ooh. Which, which is like, um, so we could could we check is loading here? Could we do? Oh yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. Can you, you can do this. this. Which, yep. Uh, but you can do also like is loading equals true or whatever. We should um, get true out of that. Okay. Right. Um, or yeah, false. False in our case. But, well, well, yeah, because this is the 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 current current correct one. Yeah. Now. Um, and you can do whatever you want. Uh, so I guess we could do inspect this. Right. Ah, yeah, which is okay, just cool. the same thing. Yeah. So that that's that's what just making sure that we can inspect the variable. So I, I guess it, that would be useful in the case where um, there's there's some object uh, that you need to get a handle on, um, which you don't already have access to, um, and that, that might be a good option or use case for inspect, where um, the debugger naturally is going to show you the uh, variables within the current scope. Um, and if you want things that are out of the current scope or that you don't have access to yet, you can use inspect. Right, yes. OK, so I think we've, uh, let, let me see if we, we have any more icons that we can click here. Drop frame, <laughs> um, run to cursor. Oh, run to cursor we didn't do, but th which is basically like, oh, I w I'm, I'm not really interested in any of this. I want to run to here. And you do run to cursor, and uh, nothing happens. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, uh, this, I well, would expect this to run to the to here, but uh, what do I know, right? Um, that's interesting. Yeah. It didn't stop there. I'm sure there's some kind of condition that all, running to cursor only works when the stars are aligned in certain ways. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, I have the documentation up here for IntelliJ's things, um, but we can continue. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think th this is basically. Yeah. You can obviously stop and resume uh, your code, uh, but let's let's. I think we're ready to try and tackle the the bug, right? And I think my my first um, intuition is to just get rid of this, and I because I think it's here from a different era, as uh, so well. <laughs> just like I'll just do this. Which is my favorite way to deal with bugs. Mm -hmm. And uh, code deleted is code debugged. Yes, exactly. And see if everything works as as promised. So I'm going to open that one. 
All right, okay. so this works as expected. If I go here, ah, oh, that's that's the problem. Okay. Oh. Right, so that's why we had it here because, like, when we actually show this is a page view. Um, so this this thing that page controller, yeah. So that was, so that block of code you deleted was trying to make sure we have new stories as well as top stories. Yeah, basically, yeah. When you when we yes, like imagine we had seven of them. Uh, this code that I just deleted would every time the the home page was rebuilt, which is any time that because we're depending on the Hacker News provider, mm. anytime there is a like a new thing, then it would then it would go and re refresh the current the current tab, which is the current tab is always the, the tab that we are looking at currently. Um, so <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I, I think what we can do instead is Right, we, we could add more logic, and that's kind of ugly. We could add more logic that that says like, "Hey, are we actually?" Well, actually, oh, we could we could hackingly change this to something like this, if not current is loading. You know, like we could, uh, we could do double check, double check. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, Maybe not best practices for handle race, handling race exactly. conditions, but yes, <laughs> it is an option. Um, it is an option. So uh, I think uh, uh, there is a more elegant. I just don't know what it is, but I think there's a more more elegant way to find out if we are okay. Favorites uh, to check if we're going to a next tab. And um, right, so kind of as part of the that page transition, kick off a refresh. Yes, yes. And uh, yeah, we have handle, we even have handle page change. Hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. That would potentially be a decent place to put that. Um, I wonder if there's this, is, is this called like every frame we, yeah, I think it's, it's called every frame. Oh, so maybe not. I don't. We probably don't want to be refreshing the list on every single frame yeah, of the, exactly. that transition animation. <laughs> but we could check, like, um, how about this? Um, so final previous index is current index, and then. Uh, and then this, right? And then mm -hmm. if if current index is not previous index, this is not super elegant, but at least it kind of works. Uh, we want to set state. We're setting state. Oh. Because we want these things to change, right? Or we want even if you're scrolling like this, we want this to highlight and this to unhighlight. Yeah. Right. Um, so, ah. Uh, oh, okay. So I'll, um, I'll just is it is this maybe where our our is loading could come back in? Um, so yeah, exactly. Potentially on this, the first time handle page changes is, is run, we check is loading, and if it's not loading, we kick off a refresh. Exactly. If it is loading, yes. we skip it, and we don't worry about it. Um, I think I just I'll just do this instead because this looks cleaner to me. So new index is the new one. If current index is not new index, then current index becomes new index. Hmm. Uh, which which gives us something to to put in that state. Um, okay. And then, um, and then we can also. What did we do here? 
Right, yeah, we, we want to crunch. Mm, we want to do this, basically. Oh, damn it. I need to do this as well. Oh, boy. OK, this, <laughs> this is getting fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, so all right. We'll see. Um, tabs. And then we hopefully can just do this. I mean this. Oh, and and that's because we are outside of a build in this case. Yes, I hope. Yeah, handle page change. Yeah, uh, should be sure that should are. be part of a page transition controller or something like that. Yes. So we do need tabs here, but not the other things and. All right, let's see. So um, see what happens. Okay. okay. Uh, do we have the, the bug still? So constructor called first refresh or first stop called refresh. Refresh call. Work to seems, create it. Article fine. Okay, this is fine. And then the moment of truth. Oh, oh yeah. it's refreshing. Hey, look at that. Yeah. Cool. Call, we fixed the bug. And it's it it took uh what one hour? <laughs> yeah. You know, that that whole let's let's only take 20, 30 minutes to walk through the debugger. Hey, we took an hour and we solved the bug too. <laughs> All right. Um well, so um I I think we, we can wrap up here. Um I'm Hopefully this was helpful. Um, I learned new stuff about the inspects uh, things and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, please, you know, feel free to still use print debugging, but also know that there is a better way very often, and that um, you can you can do all these things like inspect the the current frame, meaning the variables that are in scope and stuff. Um, you can use Dart Colon Developer to uh, like programmatically start the debugger and stuff like that. So, so hopefully that that will give uh, you um, a good a good overview of this. And yep. be, yeah. And if you are in a editor that doesn't have a built-in debugger or for whatever reason isn't able to attach to your running code. Um, I don't know how you'd end up in that scenario, but it happens. Uh, you can use the Dart develop developer tools um, to do the same thing, um, which is also very useful to know. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for your attention, and see you next time. Yep. We'll see you later, everyone. Mm -hmm.